Hello, all you virtuous voluntarists. Uh, <laughs> at this point, you might be wondering, who are you people, and why are you here? So, in this episode, we're going to tell you. We're uh, going to go through a series of questions and basically interview each other and tell you all about us. So, thanks for joining us. Um, so, first, first things first, we're going to start off with how we met because Sarah and I have been friends for a while now. Uh, we didn't yeah. just meet to do this. Uh, so, right. yeah, so I think yeah. uh, we're going to go in. Why don't you start with that? Okay. Sarah, how did we meet? So I was an avid listener to a podcast called The School Sucks Project, and I volunteered very bravely to be part of a panel to discuss a movie that, Brett Vinat of the School Sucks Project was going to discuss on his show. So I got on the show and Brett asked um, where we were all from and I revealed that I was from sh the Chicago suburbs and that I was also recently unschooling a 10 year old that had just left school. And Meredith, you were also an avid listener mm -hmm, and tuning yeah. in that evening. Yeah, I was actually really excited about that episode I watched the movie and I had my own little notes that I was that I took on it just I was very excited um, and I was too shy to call in but um, when you came on I, I heard you say that you were from the Chicago suburbs and had a 10 year old that you were recently unschooling and I was in the same position in the same place so I did something out of character and I contacted you because <laughs> I you know I'm an introvert I hardly ever contact anyone but I thought I'd go out on a limb and I did and it turned out perfect and then we just started talking right away we became fast friends and mm -hmm. um, our kids met and we hung out a whole bunch and and here we are so and it's been awesome I've spent a, four years now I know I cannot time. believe it so yeah I'm so yeah. glad that you reached out because yeah. I wouldn't have known you were out there me too. I know. It was so exciting. I, I couldn't even believe when you said that. That's why I was like, wow, I need to talk to this chick. And actually, it was funny because I didn't, you just said your name was Sarah. And I didn't, I think I went through Facebook and I was like, okay, who's name is Sarah, who's also watching School Sucks podcast. and Right. Um, I think probably I had fanned the page too. I think he had a fan page then, so. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the story. No, oh, exciting. Okay. So we're gonna get into a bunch of stuff, but before we get into all of that, Sarah, I must ask you, how did you become an anarchist? <laughs> <laughs> that's great, Jeff Berwick style, huh? Yep. So, um, how did I become an anarchist? Well, I was a peaceful parent. Um, and I was researching education and homeschooling, unschooling, all sorts of things and went down that rabbit hole and ended up finding uh, lots of information about anarchism, basically. I just sort of had an epiphany one day after reading and listening to enough things that I was an anarchist. Uh, basically, so my gateway was through parenting. Okay. Yeah, actually that was similar to me. Um, I I grew up liberal. I think I might have said that before. Um, and you grew up conservative, right? Mm -hmm. That was your thing. I tried it all. I was liberal okay. and then I was conservative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I actually, I grew up liberal and then I kind of dropped the liberal. And, okay, so I grew up liberal and everybody around me was liberal. I really didn't know too many conservatives, just like a couple here and there. Um, mm -hmm. And... Um, so as I got older, I sort of dropped all that, and I just called myself independent because I didn't know anything. I didn't want to call myself anything if I didn't know what I was talking about. So um, me, I kind of came in the conspiracy theorist way, and what I mean by that is uh, I sort of was checking out all of this, this information on you know secret government things and. Um, you know, Illuminati, but not really. Just the, the actual, like, school, you know, was a big one mm -hmm. for me. Um, and so that's kind of, I think I came into School Sucks podcast from Tragedy and Hope, who are also kind of 
in the conspiracy crowd. And, um, you know, uh, James Corbett was a big guy for me. I really liked his stuff and um, just that kind of thing. And I, I realized something was very wrong and a lot of things were really wrong. But um, it was sort of a rock and a hard place because I was sort of conditioned to think it was the corporations that were the problem, which kind of they are, but they're only the problem because of the state, but I didn't know that until later. So it was it was a whole bunch of things. I started reading Mises, uh, the Mises.org website, and uh, and I actually at first I thought that that was, I, I was reading Mises and anti-war, and I thought they were both liberal, but they weren't. They were libertarian. Um, so when all this stuff happened, oh, and then Barack Obama became president, and my whole family was so excited. My sister was campaigning for him, um, and I stuck up for her if uh, people would say things to her, which they would. Um, and then when, after Barack Obama got elected and he immediately didn't do anything that he promised, it sort of uh, hit me that, that this is all BS. And then after that, I... I stopped reading everything that was liberal, but I kept reading everything that was libertarian. And uh, I pretty much School Sucks podcast, really, the way Brett explains it, um, he just laid it right out. And, and I was like, okay, I get it now. Yep, I'm an anarchist. So yeah. it was a progression like that. Right, right. Yeah, to go into a little more detail quickly, I had an online community that I actually, it was basically all people that went to my high school, mm -hmm. and that was sort of my first experience with um, with the internet and communicating with people in a message board, and there were political threads, and so I got quickly exposed to lots of different ideas, and people would sort of argue and flesh out their arguments there. So it was a, almost like a crash course in figuring out and really having to define your politics, because we had to express that to somebody, not just, you know, a passing conversation sitting at the table on Thanksgiving. It was really fleshing it out, and people would come back, and so it was sort of a debate forum. Mm -hmm. So that was when I really started researching, okay, so why do I think this way, or why is this important to me? And I would, you know, scour the internet. And I came actually across Ayn Rand and um, some groups that were fans of hers and read a lot of her stuff and thought, okay, this makes, a lot of this makes sense. But then not all of it did. Quickly I realized it wasn't like the war stuff and the pro-military and, you know, that some people are irrational, and anyway. Right. So that didn't sit well with me, but that sort of lit the fire of the ideas that her philosophy does speak to that I think many anarchists would agree with, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so then I just moved along through there. Uh, I was already parenting a certain, or beginning to think further from just attachment parenting to peaceful parenting. Um, and trying to embrace that more and giving my kids more freedom and it just seemed to make sense why wouldn't you apply that to all parts of your life and so through that I started researching more and right. ended up listening to the usual mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's that's interesting I always like hearing how people be how people get here right it's it's yeah. always different but I mean, there are similarities, too, but then I kind of think it's sort of a lifetime that you, it's a, it's a lifetime of filtering information and picking out what's what fits you and what doesn't, and you've got all these facts or opinions floating around in your head, and, um, you know, yeah. a lot of people don't ever put those in order, but the libertarian philosophy um, really does do that for you so that really is very much like a light bulb especially the non-aggression principle that was yeah. really what made everything click um, yes anyway and I so. do remember that moment like oh my god okay I'm an anarchist <laughs> and then telling one person that I was yeah. really close with like okay so here's the deal right I'm an anarchist now <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I don't even, I don't know if I've told, I don't know who I've told. I'm sure everybody knows at this point, so 
it's not a secret, but I don't talk about it much outside of, you know, us and or mm-hmm. if somebody asks. So yeah. If somebody you asks. Might be I'll, surprised how little people do actually understand, though, right? I mean, I'm finding that. Yeah. But yeah. they have to all have their own journey, right? So. Absolutely, and I, you know, that was ours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we're gonna um, go on to our next question, uh, which is kind of, I, I suppose, well, we didn't answer this already. So, which word best describes your ideology out of all of them? Well, I like the word anarchist. I do. I, I've tried voluntarist and I, I think that's really good too um, libertarian but that doesn't quite do it because there's the big L, big L libertarians and the small L libertarians and sometimes I like the shock value I'll be honest of the word anarchist that's actually exactly my answer too <laughs> which is funny that's why we're friends so yeah I you know people do know the word anarchist and even if they don't have the correct impression of it which most of the time they don't and it's funny because you realize that people's impression of the word anarchy varies depending on who you're talking to so you'd think that everybody would have a similar notion like oh that's their you know bad people who break things and wear black uh, but that's not exactly what everybody sees. It, you know, it's a different different variations on that, and some people like it, and some people don't. Um, but then they see me, so and I'm not violent at all. So you know, I say it, and I I do. I like the shock value too, and I think it's interesting when I say I'm an anarchist, and that sort of has a disconnect in people's minds because I'm certainly not what they picture when they mm-hmm. think of anarchists. So, and voluntarist, it's a good word. It definitely uh, encompasses the ideology, but that one's harder because people have never heard that word. And so, you know, they're just left in limbo, like what the heck is that? And often I've noticed they think of volunteer instead of voluntary, and then you have to explain more, and it's just, it's right. less effective. And libertarian, same thing. Um, there are too many different kinds of libertarians to, you know, it's a good mm-hmm. umbrella term if you need that, mm-hmm. but yeah, so I, I do prefer anarchist and sometimes ANCAP, mm-hmm. um, but I, uh, and while I'm a free market advocate, advocate and I like uh, capitalism for sure, mm-hmm. uh, I don't like to put emphasis on that for a few reasons and that it's kind of unnecessary. Um, I think yeah. it'll work itself out. I right. I believe that capitalism is just the way things work, so it doesn't actually need to be there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What did you said something in another show that I thought was poignant? Um, that the free market is just people. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you say I, specifically working with trading with people or trading and interacting? Trading yeah. and interacting with people. So. Just and capitalism has a bad name too, has a bad rap as a mm-hmm. as a word as well. And there's room for everybody in anarchy in anarchy. Oh yeah. Yeah. And if people want to um, create their own little cultures or, or uh, communities in whatever style they choose, then that's mm-hmm. fine. There's no there's nobody there in if you're an anarchist, if you're an in, in an anarchist society, there's nobody there telling you that you can or can't do it unless it's unless it's hurting someone right. but you know everything you know and that's actually part of the free market so like I said it's, right. it's pointless all of this is free market anyway so it's pointless to say you know I'm a free market anarchist unless right. you're contrasting yeah 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 and just uh, for those who are curious and because um, some people on the Voluntary Virtues were talking about this a couple days ago. Um, what is your Myers-Briggs type? Um, I-N-F-P. <laughs> yeah, there I you always go. forget it. I'm the healer <laughs> and the hero, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. you're a hero healer. <laughs> healer. <laughs> 
<laughs> Great. Um, and I am an INTP, which is, there are kind of a lot, actually, I think there are kind of a lot of both in, that are voluntarists, both INFP and INTP. Um, so that's just, just for those who are, were wondering, sometimes they take little polls, and I always enjoy looking at those. It's always very interesting. Um, and I, I think it's interesting that lots of voluntarists are introvert just at all. Mm -hmm. That's kind of telling, or I don't, I don't know what you would gather from that, but I think it's interesting. So, yeah. Have you, there ever, you go. have you ever known anyone to say they're an extrovert? I'm uh -huh. just curious. You have, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I know you can, well, I don't I know. Mean, I know extroverts, sure. Right. Maybe only introverts talk about their introvertedness. I don't know. I think I think so, yeah. <laughs> I think it's it's more like, uh, you know, oh, I'm not crazy. After right. all, look, it's called introvert. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not broken. Right, right. Because <laughs> yeah. it's definitely an extrovert's world, which I can mm -hmm. understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and there are good and bad qualities to both. Right. So, yeah. I don't attach myself to either one. I mean, I am put one above the other. I think we need them both. Yeah. So, there's that. And, ooh, okay, so this is our next question. It's a really good one. Um, if you could go back and say one thing to your younger self, what would you say? So, like, okay, let's pick an age. Um, how about your 14-year-old self? Same as their kids. So, mm, Yes. Uh, buy Bitcoin and hold on to it. <laughs> <laughs> or read Rothbard. Um, oh, that was mine. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay. See, we always think so much alike. Know, we do. <laughs> But it's it true. yours too. It's so true. I would tell you, and you would tell me, right? Because mm -hmm. if we were friends when we were fourteen, right? And like, we had yes. yes. <laughs> that's. I mean, that's interesting. I actually, that's the yeah. truth. I really would tell myself mm -hmm. read Rothbard, and there are a number of reasons why. But I think that if I had that that understanding and that knowledge. I mean, Rothbard is amazing. The, the, not just Rothbard, but the whole ideology is amazing. And if I would have had that at a younger age, I think it would have taken me a lot farther than I am now. Um, yeah. In like everything. everything. So, yeah. Yeah. And I, I just, I can't think of anything more important. Maybe, no, that's, that's about yeah. it. Yeah. I wouldn't tell myself to buy Bitcoin. I'm sorry. I would have told myself to mine it. Oh, there you. Yeah, not that's worry about bad. it. It's gonna ruin your laptop. Just do it. <laughs> yeah, mine Bitcoin. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then you'd be like, "What's Bitcoin?" And don't sell it. Yeah. <laughs> so long. Right. <laughs> yeah. I wonder. Maybe I would have. I don't know. Maybe I would have told myself to do better in school, but I don't know if that would have worked. Yeah. Yeah, I probably would have. Yeah. And even the Reed Rothbard thing at 14. Mm -hmm. I don't know, though. It might be freaky if you see yourself, like your older self, and they say something to you. It's probably like, yeah. okay, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you say. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Would so you recognize? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I think that sums it up, though. Mm -hmm. That would go a long way. Yeah. And so if there are any teenagers watching this or even you know anybody who hasn't read Rothbard read Rothbard do it now so mm -hmm. so you can start yeah getting that knowledge and it's well it's more than knowledge but that's the start yeah yeah so okay well that was an easy one um, easier than I thought it would be uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay number six what is your favorite thing about being voluntarist uh, the people that I've met, for one, the community, uh, having an understanding of the world that I live in better than I did ever in my whole life. <laughs> um, yeah. How about you? Um, yeah, I, I really do enjoy 
the community. It's kind of an instant community. And um, I really, online you see some people who you might disagree with, but if you meet them in person, it's like you don't. I mean, they're all just such good people. Mm -hmm. And um, But, yeah, it's more than that. It's it's the knowledge that I have. It's the con <clears throat> the confidence that I have in um what I know to be true and and principles that go along with it are so helpful and uh, yeah so I guess just the whole thing I, I, I really like being a volunteerist um, yeah so that's <laughs> well then we'll get to the other part here so what's the worst thing about being a volunteerist <laughs> <laughs> Having an understanding of the whole world that I live in. <laughs> oh, God. yeah, that is annoying. <laughs> it's sort of the same thing I love about being it. Um, yeah, the frustration when you see uh, fallacies or you see things being promoted in a way that you know don't make sense, that that, that are untrue, and that people haven't, people don't, I mean, people don't see that. That's frustrating. Mm -hmm. uh, um you don't really fit in in any other political conversations. <laughs> you just have to keep your mouth shut a lot or, uh, you know, be that crazy libertarian friend. I usually opt for the mouth shut thing. Cause, right. You know, <laughs> yeah. if you're going to convince your friends, you have to have some. So <laughs> there's that. Yeah, and oh, it makes watching TV really difficult or movies of any kind. Yeah. Yes. And I've yes. had to give up some bands too. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it is it is frustrating watching everything go down, watching people continue to do and say the things that are hurting them personally. Mm -hmm. And you want to say something and you can't and it's very difficult to explain. Um but one thing I missed, I'm going to take the opportunity, one really good thing about being volunteerist is realizing that you don't have control over anything but yourself and you have to let go and let go of control of everything besides, you know, your own personal property and your own life, but you don't need to control everything, and you don't even need to keep up with anything, or, I mean, keep up with what you want, but, you know, people are constantly telling you, you have to be part of, of the political, you know, body in, in America, you have to know what the politicians are doing, you have to know, you know, everything on the news, and you have to keep up with all this and that, and that's actually not true, it's not in your rational self-interest to do that and there's nothing you can do about it anyway so I just I like the fact that I don't have any weight on my shoulders about controlling anybody else I don't have to do that and it's not it's not it's the opposite of what you should be doing right it's the opposite of of living a fulfilling life so I let go of trying to control right. people around me yeah. And it's and that's, not like you can't step in at any given point in time and know exactly, oh, yeah, I didn't need to be caught up until now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all the same. So, But, yeah, it's true. Freedom yeah. starts with you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yourself. Right. Just to let it go. It's very freeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's a really good part about it. I really like it. Mm -hmm. And, I, I mean... So yeah, the the bad part is is pretty much just not being able to convey that to other people, you know, and and watching them continually do things that are self destructive, I guess, right, including right. trying to control everything all the time. Yeah, but, yeah. After a while, you get used to it. And you just kind of keep going. <laughs> And you can always plant the seeds, right? I mean, we can always talk about it in certain ways. And if anybody's curious, of course, take that opportunity. But um, you can't push it on anybody. They have to come to their own understanding of it. It's personal. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, you know, everybody's got their own journey, and you just got to let them live. That's yeah. it. So, 
Okay. Um, do you think we will ever see liberty in our lifetime? Like they say. But do you want to answer that first? <laughs> sure. Uh, no. <laughs> Actually, um, <laughs> I was kidding. Um, I, I think we're seeing the beginning of it now. I, I really just think it's an idea whose time has come and that nothing ever is, you know, uh, what it, there's no button like Rothbard's button. There mm -hmm. is no button. It's our progression. They happen slowly over time. Um, and when you look back, you're like, wow, that was fast. But when you're in the middle of it, you can't see it. But nothing happens instantly. And I think we're just watching it unfold. Mm -hmm. And we might be, you know, a little ahead of the curve, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, but, and I don't think it's going to really, we're not going to have everybody on the same page of liberty that is like uh, in our lifetime I don't think right. that's going to occur but I think it's already started mm -hmm. so that's my answer yeah the idealist in me you know the INFP yeah so, uh, I think we already have it in many respects it's here and you can take it every day you can have liberty but I mean in, in the other sense um, I don't know I think it's definitely possible and um, I think it's interesting I know we talked about something Larkin Rose wrote the other day that was very poignant just about like there will come a time when we will not even define ourselves like this because it will be unnecessary there would be no other way to think about things nobody yep. would ever it wouldn't occur to people to hurt other people to get their way Right, and that was awesome when he said mm -hmm. that, I think. It, it was that, like, we shouldn't be just wasting all our time arguing about silly stuff, and I don't even care if you call me an anarchist or a volunteerist or whatever, because there's going to be a point when everybody's that. And so right. it's, we'll move forward from that. Yeah. So that's cool. I liked that. I mean, I like Larkin Rose. He always he's always interesting. If you don't have his Facebook page, you should get it because I agree. He writes stuff all the time, and it's awesome. And then he has got these big long, you know, yeah. two hundred or eight hundred comments, and they're <laughs> they're funny and yeah, it's it's a good time. <laughs> but it can take up a lot of time too. Mm -hmm. So just to warn you. Uh, okay, so um, oh, this is interesting. Do you agree with the statement most people would be voluntarists if they knew what it was? Yes, I do. Yeah. Most. Right. Yeah, I do too, actually. Um, and I think there's a difference between what people think they are and what they actually are. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, and I, I know that different people have different opinions on this and it seems sometimes like everybody just wants to be little dictators like everybody <laughs> but yeah. I kind of I think that's a lot of programming mm -hmm. and it you know we're, we're up against a lifetime of programming so that's and and that's just the way everybody interacts with everyone else and I, I don't think they'd think it I, they don't see it as strange just because that's the way it is but mm -hmm. I really do think that okay not everybody um, I do know some people who yeah they're not you know right. they really enjoy controlling other people and, and they would not, not hesitate to use force to get what they want um, and they might even know that <laughs> they don't mm -hmm. even care yeah but yeah I think most people are are nice and friendly and don't want to hurt anyone so yeah right and have good intentions with mm -hmm. their ideas of helping everyone or helping yeah. whoever they feel they need to be helping with mm -hmm. yeah yeah but there are and people so that that it works really well for this this way oh yeah well that's why it's why it exists mm -hmm. so but luckily, if they're a minority, then which I believe they are, right. because if they're a if they're if a majority of people really enjoys controlling other people through force, then kind of don't we're not. That's an uphill battle that we're right. never going to win. 
And that's why I think most people would be a volunteerist if they understood it, because people don't understand that their ideas, and when they say we should, they should, what that what they're actually saying, uh, what they really want to happen. It's not what their intention is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If yeah. they had to go and do it themselves, they wouldn't do it. Oh, right. Yeah, they definitely wouldn't. And, and, and they, it reminds me of that... Uh, that video with the police officer that I don't know why it's actually not quite <laughs> on point but um, because those people okay so there's this video I'll just explain it really quick but the police they dressed a guy up as a police officer and then they had him ask people on the street randomly to do yeah. really crazy things and they all did it and I don't even know why because <laughs> it was insane it wasn't even like policey things that they no. asked him to do really yeah he just yeah, it was it switch that switch the grocery bag you're carrying into the other hand. <laughs> walk uh, along these bricks and not those. And there was <laughs> let me have a bite of your corn. <laughs> <laughs> and they all did it, and it was really sad. Yeah. Um, but but when he wasn't in uniform, which they did right after that, people didn't didn't do what he said to do, and and that was interesting. Um, so yeah, I think it's kind of similar to where mm. it's sort of like a like this haze that's on everybody's mind that just needs to be cleared and then right, you know. right. the belief in authority right mm -hmm. yeah yeah so yeah and oh yeah yeah well that would yeah obedience to authority obedience. well and both of them separately too yeah mm -hmm. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, a whole nother show. Yeah, actually. Well, we should do a show about that. We should do a show uh, about that. People. That's, a, that's a particular angle that, that mm -hmm. people take um, among many. Um, but that's actually the one I like the best because it gets to the root. Uh, so, yeah, we should, we should explain that in one of our shows in the future. Well, it's a date. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, this is our last question, um, and I like it last. So, if, if somebody handed you a blue pill, would you take it? So, the blue pill is the one that would make you forget everything you know and go back to your life as a statist. So, um, maybe some days? No. <laughs> no, I would not. No. I, uh, yeah, this is kind of a no brainer. I wouldn't either. I, I've learned too much. Uh, but I, I mean, yeah. Some days it's tempting. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard you know, if you're not relating to people like you used to. And mm -hmm. like I said, TV shows and music and pop culture in general, um, which is true. Mm -hmm. But I, I think what what we've given up or what we have is more valuable than mm -hmm. what we've given up. So, yeah, I would not, I would do what Neo did and take the red pill. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. would too. Yeah. So, so, take the red pill. Right, do it. <laughs> or else. <laughs> so, that's, uh, I think that's all about us. I don't know, There's. we're not really, really superheroes or anything, or we don't have grand, grand stories, we're not, billionaires. <laughs> We're not rich white men like uh, like Salon thinks yes. we are. <laughs> right, right. Oh yeah. We're just uh, moms and what did we say? <laughs> the, um, I forgot our, our little title we had for a possible. Oh yeah. Who are you people and why are we or why are yeah. you here? Yeah. yeah. We don't have a big story. Yeah. But we do enjoy it, and uh, and we like, and and this is a good outlet for us um, because, like we said, we don't push it on people. I don't anyway. I know you don't I, too. So mm -mm. Yeah, I try no. really hard not to. Mm -hmm. Maybe my family gets more of the brunt, but I'm learning. Yeah. Well, my family, I've we've gotten a couple screaming matches, um, but. That was a while ago, and yeah, I don't push it on them. Even if they say something that irks me, I just let it go. <laughs> Which, mm -hmm. 
you know, I, I mean, I love my family, and I know yeah. that they're good people, and they have good intentions, and that's good enough yeah. for me. Yeah, so. and when you want to turn somebody's world upside down, they're not going to be really happy about it. Mm -mm. Yeah. They're not going to just, oh, okay. It is a journey. It's personal. and mm -hmm. I've often thought lately if I could just be that silent person, they would maybe become curious. So so what do you think? Since you haven't said anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe that would be more powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, you know, if... I mean, they're my family and mm -hmm. your family, so they do see little things here and there yeah. or, you know, unintentional things that I do or say. And if you, if they get enough of that, that's like the planting seeds thing. At least right. it shows them that there is a different perspective. Yes, so, yes. You know. And we know so. with children that it's not what we say, it's what we do. So through our actions and our conclusions about different situations... Uh, we can live as much in freedom as we can and do the, you know, the what would be pr the right thing to do when interacting with uh, each other and other people. Mm -hmm. Is that their example? Yeah. 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 Oh, the, my daughter's totally into it, too. <laughs> That's totally my fault, but yeah, she's, which That's is good. Funny. I mean, I guess I, instead of telling myself, read Rothbard, I'm telling her. <laughs> yeah. So, yes. Yeah. But she's she's happy too, you know. She she's really yeah. enjoying it, so yeah, right. that's good. That is. So if you have any other questions for us, you could certainly put them in the comments. And if you just have a comment, leave it, like it. That's great. Yep. And we'll see you next time. We'll see you next time. Okay. Bye, Meredith. Always fun to talk to you. Bye, Sarah. Likewise. Bye, bye.